checked uh, checked out everything. Have you ever used a state machine? Yep. Finite state machine in code, not visual. Sh I almost said visual shit, but not visual coding or scripting. But yeah, all of my AI is using state machines. You want a demo? It's a great song. We'll play. Yeah. I'm just adding an extra feckin' canvas. Absolute shite. Okay, rub it up. Get your screenshot button ready. Um. Okay. Okay, right. Let me just... Hang on. One second, guys. One second. Where is it? There's a button I'm looking for on the dashboard. I can't find it. Whatever. Doesn't matter. 27 minutes in. Right. So. State machine. I'll actually create one right now for you, because I was going to do one anyway. Not today, but soon. Mainly on input handling with a hierarchy of states. Okay, okay. Alright, hang on. Alright, rub it up. Let's go into a brand new scene. I fucking, I hate what I'm working on right now, so I'll just go into another scene. Create, um... I'll create, I'll create one right now, okay? So, one sec. So let's say... Quick tutorial. 1000, 1000. Plain for our ground, right? Let's uh, add a... Whoops. Not a feckin' empty. Cube. Where's the camera preview? Oh. Alright, so say this cube has three states, okay? <laughs> um, say we have. Whoops. Say we have um, move right, moving left, um, jumping, right? Right? Moving left, moving right, and jumping. So, what I would do is, if you're just doing monos everywhere, it's totally fine. Uh, cube controller, right? I'll be deleting all this shit after, so, screenshot button ready, on, on the ready. <laughs> so, cube controller. Uh, let's... I have this stuff here. Um, do I have you on Discord, Rub it up? Could you send me a message on Discord? You do? Send me a message on Discord and I'll send you some classes. Uh, using state machine logic. Uh, is the namespace where I have all my state shit, okay? And then we have um, private state machine. Um, cube states. No. Yeah, it has to be the type that you're calling it from. Yeah. With this shit. Uh, state machine, cube controller, state machine. We have to give it an initial state. You can do this in the awake if you want. Uh, change state. To new um, cube state um, initial, right? And then in here we have state machine dot update. Is this kind of what you're looking for? Got a lurker sometime. My wife demands my presence, attention, will <laughs> all the time. All right, our See you in a wee while. <laughs> This is what you're after, okay. So, cube state initial. Let's go create that class. Um, create C sharp script. Cube state initial. Um, organizing them as well. 
I'll just say, I'll just show you what I have. Uh, scripts. AI items. In there, I have... Uh, I have all my controllers in there, right? I've done a lot of changes to this kind of methodology before, but this is where I have all my controllers and each of these would have a state machine, you know? And I'd be calling them from an AI manager, which calls all the updates rather than having a mono behavior on each class. Something you should consider, definitely. It fucking blew up in, in terms of performance when I did it that way, over having a mono behavior on every item. Right, but that's not that's not um, important, right? The state machine stuff is here. This is the main class that I'll send you if you message me on Discord. Oh, you have done. No, nope, wasn't you. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, there you are. Okay. So this is the first class I'll send you. This guy, I'll walk you through it real quick. Um, this is using generics, like. I know you're you're an amazing dev, but if you're not familiar with generics, go go do a thing on them. They're fucking deadly. You can pass any any class in there. You know what I mean? I, I'm sorry, I'm I'm unfamiliar with your level. I know it's fairly fucking high, but I know it's not in C sharp uh, that I've seen you working. So um, then there is fixed update state machine. You don't need this. You don't need this at all, um, but it does the same thing, but it just has a fixed update method as well, in case you have anything physical that you want your state machine to be using, right? And then I've got um, the state class. This is the important one. This defines a state with a generic type that has to conform to these rules. So each one will have an enter, exit, and update. So, that's a walkthrough of the state machine big big boy class and all of that. So inside cube state initial, right, instead of mono behavior, it's now a state. Sorry, we have to use using state machine logic. And then we'll have a state of type uh, cube controller. Okay? And then it's gonna complain that it's not implement abstract class, right? So then we'll get our three methods that it needs. And in there then we can say um, debug log. I just got made it. Okay. And it'll just wait there. So debug log uh, waiting in initial state. Uh, what I like to do as well is I like to have a method somewhere that will just like when I'm first working on it that'll have like a piece of text above the the item or um, a color that'll ch it'll change something to so I can visually see right that guy's waiting for something or that guy over there is he, he should change to another state now in three two one kind of shit you know um, so yeah this is like the most basic setup I can think of right. So we'll we'll run this guy first, make sure it's working. Let's change him to a different color as well. Maybe the the plane at the bottom as well, just for the crack. Uh, red, red ground, and what's the most obnoxious color going going with red? Blue. Let's see what our camera looks like now. Okay. Now the thing, the thing about doing it this way, um, a lot of state machine implementations have um, have singletons as each state, which is great for a player in a single player game, but a wee bit dodgy if you're doing multiplayer or you know shit like that. But they just do it for the crack. The good way about this is these guys can both be doing their own thing in their own state machines. Okay. So let's keep her lit. Oh, no reference exception. State machine dot update. Sorry. Equals new. This. And this, because we're initializing it like that, and it needs to go in here, so. State machine. Uh, wait, what? 
state machine equals a new one and pass this then right so that what that'll do is that'll go into our constructor and set our owner right which is extremely handy and I'll show you how that works in a sec and it'll also initialize our current state so you know we're, we're ready to go okay so when it, whenever we change state as well I'll, I'll do that after sorry I'm useless at fucking tutorials right so there they are both of them are waiting on initial state now okay I just got mated, and now it's waiting in initial state. So far, so good. Excellent. Okay. So now, if we want to change the state, for example, right? Uh, let's put in, in the initial state, we'll make a new one. We'll say, move left, right? So let's... You know what? <laughs> These should be in separate... Um, separate files. Because they can get quite large, but I'll put them one after the other if you're comfortable with that. Uh, move left. Yeah, awesome, okay. So, move left, and then, look, I'm just going to copy past the, the whole thing. They're all going to be identical setup-wise. Sorry. And I'll just KF that so that it formats itself. Uh, empty states, don't worry about them, or empty, empty blocks, they have to be there, because this guy, without using any reflection or anything like that, is going to call the exit state on the abstract, or the, the instance that's been passed to it. Sorry. Okay, so we've got move left, let's uh, also put in another one, call it move right. And then we'll put in another one right at the end, call it uh, jump, jump ing, I guess. So we'll just do a transform translate. <laughs> you do something familiar, uh, oh, alright, excellent, or similar, sorry, yeah, gotcha. So he just got mated, um, in the update state, let's change him to, oh yeah, we're going to do owner here, owner dot. Now. In the original implementation that I've seen of this kind of stuff, they do pass stuff in here, um, like cube controller uh, owner, right? That's how I've seen it done before. But I've moved all of that shit out into the base class uh, for handiness, because you're always going to want to reference that fucker. So I just do owner dot, and you can get to whatever's defined in the cube controller. So here we're going to say uh, public or internal, whatever way you want to do it. Um, state machine dot change state, and then we're gonna say new cube state move left, and we'll do that if um, input dot get key down space key code dot space. Or sorry, let's say uh, key code dot. Uh, A for move left, and then we're gonna say, um, we'll get rid of this debug log as well. Right, and in move left, we'll put in something that says move right we get rid of these and when it's moving right debug log or oh, sorry no um, if input get key down Handle input in the game updates. Why not? In the state updates, yeah? Why not? We code dot uh, W. Owner change state. Ooh. State machine dot change state. 
I'll show you my implementation after. It's it's different to this, but um, I'll talk you through it. It's much better as well. Um, new cube state move jumping. Why did I call it move jumping? It's just jumping. Try to avoid having constructors in your states as well. Try not to do that. If you need to pass things from one to the other, I'd recommend putting them in the owner. And then jump. Oh, sorry. Debug. Bug. Jumping. So, A, D, W. So if I go A, D, W now, it should debug log jumping. Even though it'll do nothing, it'll it'll run through the different states. So A, D, W. Now it's jumping. So I couldn't have got to that state unless it was in each one. So, I mean, is there any point doing the rest? <laughs> so what we'll do here is we'll say... Uh, move left, we'll just do transform, uh, translate, oh, owner, sorry, owner, uh, transform, uh, translate, transform direction, what's that do? Transform direction from local space towards space, no idea what that is. Translate, moves the transform in the direction and distance of the translation. Uh, owner dot transform dot left. Sorry, right times 1 or 1.5F. I don't know how that works, to be honest. But it'll do that until until update state is finished, I guess. Like, un until we move out of that update. There we go, okay. Move left. Oh, this is jumping. Wait, what? Where's move right? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, it scrolled too fast. And then move right. And then jumping. Uh, up. Yeah. Okay gonna take out the updates as well after this so that's the that's pretty much it rub it up sorry it went off screen but you get the picture <laughs> is this Zach MC Tim what Alan Walker remix Hans Zimmer okay whatever it's DCMA free apparently so more Gucci hmm So, um, right, I'll take out the, uh, hang on, uh, debug, la no, um, float, time to change, go zero. Let's put in a public float, time to change, and instead of input cat key down, we'll do owner dot time to change. Yeah, sorry. I was just thinking about this for a second. I'll take this out, put it in here. Just to show you that they're not working on the same classes, they're working on the same, or on separate instances to each other. Uh, if time dot time greater than uh, time to change, return true, else time to change equal, Equals time dot time, sorry. Equals 
time dot time plus random dot range uh, zero to one f. and return false and this is gonna come uh, yeah unity engine dot random dot range and then we'll just throw these in to all of them owner dot change state sorry state machine change state new where is this cube state initial wait this will never sorry this should be here I think so now they should all, both be in an infinite loop, but they should all both change differently. You know what I mean? I'll show you my states now in a second, rub it up. Yeah, there they go. They never come back down, but whatever. Look at them go! Amazing! Two state machines. <laughs> Understand completely this looks excellent dude. Good stuff. Movement has different states. It would be weird to have one state that handles all directional movement. Okay. So I will show you the real power that I found with this stuff, right? Um My ship states, for example. I've got the NPC ship controller, which is an old class that I don't use anymore. Um, ship controller is the good one, right? So this guy, it actually doesn't have, <laughs> sorry, it doesn't have, it doesn't have the state machine in it. State machine is done by a different system I have, but it's like a ship item, which is exactly the same as the cube controller that I just, I showed you. It just have as a reference to it. It's just not a mono. It's just something that's called by a mono, right? So I feel like this is outside There we go. I feel like that was DCMA'd, but whatever. I think we went out of the League of Legends playlist there for a second. Okay, so I've got anchored, attacking, avoid terrain, being boarded, boarding, close, close range attacking, controlled by player, all of these different things, right? Some of them have different ways of moving, but they all share a movement class. So like each ship will have, um, Ship events, ship movements, um, fuck, ship audio cues, all of that kind of stuff, right? In its base class, so its controller class would have all of that shit. And each class, or each state, will go owner dot ship movement dot turn left or dot aim at blah blah blah, right? And they're all common to each of them, so put them all in something that's at the base level. Or maybe one up on a different branch off the base level, you know what I mean? And have just the classes like uh, Avoid Terrain, for example. This guy is using Owner dot Ship Movement, set speed to medium. So he's going to slow down when he hits, when he finds terrain. This is, uh, uh, the other classes will transition to this if um, it shoots rays down from the sky uh, about 20, 20 units in front of the ship. And if it hits terrain, it'll go, whoa, change state to avoid terrain. And then we go ship movement, dot ship movement settings, change to medium, uh, give it a new vector to move to, to, to change to. And then it'll get a pathfinding from another thing on the controller level. It'll give it a waypoint. Uh, update line renderer is not used anymore. And then in fixed update, it'll do an owner events on terrain, avoid it if it's, if it's fucked off to a nice safe place. Um, otherwise, if it reaches the waypoint, it'll get another one, you know? If it's still ready to go, it'll stay in this state. Uh, on terrain avoided, it'll actually switch it out to another state. Um, 
Otherwise, if those two conditions aren't set, it'll use ship movement again, turn towards vector, the, the one that's been set in that same thing. So there you go. There's a lot of messy shit. It can get messy, but for example, like some some other streamers that I watch, they have like 6,000 lines in their controllers, you know, and it might perform well when you have two or three of them in the scene. But if you have three or four of these guys and the compiler or the, the what you call it, the C sharp thing that runs through everything goes like run this 6000 and then the next 6000 and then the next 6000 and that's how unity works in the background it grabs all your all your updates in the scene and puts them all into one big massive code thing i think it uses reflection to do it and uh it runs them one by one so you're gonna notice slowdown your cpu is gonna be running all that shit so you gotta be careful of that and with state machines it keeps things nice and small. Your updates are all separated and it's only that piece that's getting getting run all the time. Um, your controller classes are, are seriously small if you do it right, you know? Um, and yeah, you can just move on with your life and <laughs> if you wanna change something, you don't have to check all of these fucking booleans. Like, is he jumping? Is he grounded? Is he at the same fucking height that he was two seconds ago? Okay, then he's able to lie down. Like, no, nah, man, like that's that in an update is a huge chunk. And then if you have more stuff, like, can he move forward? Can he strafe left? Uh, is his leg, you know, behind his head? Fuck, <laughs> all of these different if statements. You see that Christmas tree pattern in so many of these things. You ever manage colliders and such within certain states? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can do it that way, yeah, yeah. You can if he's like moving and he gets hit by something ignore it you know usually though you'd have if if you've got um if you've got a mono on the thing that you're hitting it with then why not just use that mono you know you can have different states for your colliders if you want as well you know if he hits something with a certain what the fuck okay that's that's Definitely not DCMA proof that that fucking thing man. I hate this new DCMA shit man or DMCA I can't remember how it said but whatever. I hate it. I hate it so much But yeah, you can do It's dumb as hell, right? I don't know why Twitch aren't fucking handling it man. YouTube handled that shit years ago Sort it out sort it out lads we just have such great music in here, man, you know? But yeah, I've also got a state machine for my players, my player states. A lot of them are actually missing from here. And my characters, my soldiers, all have these ones. And they all have the exact same thing. Um, they all just inherit the exact same stuff. Some of them have a, have a fixed update. All the ships do and all the player states do. And um, yeah, this is just doing some Based off the Jesus, why isn't this a switch? Okay, I need to refactor this a little bit. But like, it's just on the interstate, you have this thing that runs one shot. Boom, you know. And on the exit state as well, cleanup operations, so handy. I found separating input handling from updates in the state machine makes reusability really powerful. I suppose it's use case dependent. In my in my inputs change based on the state of the player for example if i'm in telescope view my mouse look is different to if i'm in sailing view my mouse look is different you know an orbit camera thing going on at the moment that i want to change it to as well so um yeah depending on if you're if i'm anchored and i'm hitting buttons uh, w or whatever i want to raise the anchor so i i handle the input in there so that i can go back to the other one on the enter state and the new one then i'm setting the speed and going up one you know from anchored so it's your space to one one other thing that i want to show you is um state machine like caching the states right you see in the cube controller this shit is awful creating a brand new instance of a class every time you change the state awful right if you're doing that a nice way to change that to something usable 
It mightn't be as clean, but um, where will I find it? Ship item. Close your eyes for a second until I find it, because it's fucking disgusting. Yeah, so I've got an enum. Okay, ignore the fact that I'm casting an o a whole lot here. It needs to be refactored. But I'm caching an instance of everything on a wick. Alright? It might look aw awful, but you're not creating a brand new instance in memory every time you're going to get... No leaks. Um, no orphan shit uh, running somewhere doing nothing. You know what I mean? Typically, I have a character class which registers its states on initialization and then swaps between. Yeah, perfect. Excellent. Excellent. Good stuff. Um, anything else I can think of? That's pretty much it. Did I answer any questions that you, that you had or? <laughs> like, uh, where was the problems that you were having? Just out of interest. Terrified a lot. Good stuff. Excellent. Well, my work here is done then, so. <laughs> I'll just delete all this shit then, so. Do you want the... I'll, I'll just copy past it to you. Just in case. Just in case you need it. And you have the statemachine.cs, which has everything else. Just in case you want to come back to it for reference anytime. Oh, that worked. Usually it gives me feckin' less than 5,000 characters, etc, etc. <laughs> My problem is really in reusability of states and subclassing and managing the inputs. A lot of entry points for common states. Gotcha. Well, I put this, I put the input, yeah, into, into um, like player RTS, okay, the W button when he's in RTS um, will make you fly forward through the air, like if I show you here in, no, don't want to save that, how long was that, about 40 minutes, throw that up onto, uh, onto YouTube, never know. I'm useless to doing shit like that, man. Tutorials and all that kind of crap. It's just not for me, man. <laughs> I feel like... Oh, it's, it is in Rhyme Sayers. Apparently this isn't copyrighted, so happy days. UI manager that switch view isn't working. I'll have to fix that before I can show you what I mean. But like all my inputs are driven by by the states inside them. And I don't think there's a problem with that, honestly. With separating the input, for instance, I found that reusing states between players and NPCs becomes more flexible. Gotcha. Gotcha, okay. Um the way that I do that, Robadub, is my ship states are all NPC. And my player states are all specific to the player. But the movement is shared. Um, like in sailing, for example, they, they share a controller, basically, the NPCs and the player. But I've got a bool that says controlled by player. And if an NPC state turns to controlled by player, see this? It's an empty state, but it stops the AI from, from working. Know what I mean? And then I switch it out of that into wandering, and wandering is like a base, uh, uh, an initial class for the AI to start up again, to make a decision, and that just literally just forwards them to another state in the awake. Yeah, but they they share everything else. They share cannon firing, uh, movement, all of that kind of stuff. Um, they're completely separate to all the state stuff. So. Um, you can kind of almost say that the NPC is using the inputs in a different way to those other classes. Yeah, hopefully that's that's cleared it up, hopefully. Um, and also, when I leave the, the, the player ship, 
um, the AI takes it over, so it makes it really handy for that. Uh, what was the null reference exception I was getting? It's in the UI manager, okay. UI manager. UI manager. There we go. UI sailing orbit canvas. Such groovy music tonight. No problem, very welcome. Any more questions, man, just let me know. Yeah, have me Discord. They've got a uh, help channel in the Discord. Like, this isn't the first time I've gone through the this before, you know? So, I'll just show you what I mean, though. So, when I, when I pop out of this... See the way he started moving straight away? He's controlled by the AI now, and I can tr control him like an NPC. Same as this guy. And then I want to control it again. Now, now we're back to normal. And I'm controlling him again. I know he's back to what he was. Clip it as a highlight if you want to put it on. If you don't want to put it on. Ah, gotcha, yeah. Will do. 